Cabinets of Curiosities. They have popped up a little bit everywhere across the world over the past 10 years. Why are they here and where do they come from? We're going to find out in this episode of Artifact. Cabinets of Curiosities emerged during the 13th century in Italy, and they are strictly connected to collecting. Do you collect anything? Isn't collecting a true bug? Some of us really want to possess objects, some of us like to archive them, order them, and some of us just can't let go of them. What does it say psychologically about us? Why do we need to collect objects. A cabinet of curiosities can be anything from a piece of furniture, an elegant one with lots of drawers, to a room. The cabinet of curiosities is therefore a space in which we curate the world. How does it work? Well, technically, it's the prerogative of royalty and aristocrats, especially during the Renaissance. Now, all of us have a collection of something of some kind. Why the rich? Well, because acquiring objects is expensive. Also, the rich were the ones more concerned with the construction of their identity, their social status. So to tell others how culturally grounded they are and how wealthy they are and to tell them something about their taste, the cabinet of curiosities worked a charm. Think about this cabinet in which objects you have collected through travels could be kept until the moment you decide to show them to your audience. Now, you also have to think about a world without entertaining systems. Think about a world with no TVs and MP3s, CDs. What do you do with your guests after dinner is over? Well, that's when the Cabinet of Curiosities really comes in handy. And not only the Cabinet of Curiosities is this kind of uh, one-stop entertainment center for your guests, but it's where you take center stage. And it's about your identity. It's a scene through the objects that you've collected. Why? Because nothing in the Cabinet of Curiosities has a label. That's the game. You, the owner of the cabinet, owns the knowledge. And that's where the connection between knowledge and power becomes very visible. As a knowledgeable person, you acquire power in the eyes of those who know you. So it's no surprise that our modern museums generated from cabinets of curiosities belong to the aristocracy. One cabinet of curiosities that became a fabulous museum is the Museum of the Specola in Florence, which I certainly recommend your visit during your lifetime. It's unmissable and it used to be the Medici's collection. Now, back to the cabinet of curiosities. Since there are no labels in the Cabinet of Curiosities, and since you are the instant authority on everything in it, do you think you're going to say the truth? Or are you going to embellish? Well, one of the things we know is that some of these aristocratic figures who collected intensely also went to the market to buy their natural curiosities. They didn't just collect objects through their journeys. They really wanted the rare and difficult to find because, as we know, there's prestige in owning an object that nobody else can have. The first cabinets of curiosities were dedicated to natural objects. As you can see in this beautiful image of the Museum of Ferrante in Perato, there's a crocodile hanging on the ceiling and lots of preserved animals everywhere. You can also see the act of pointing and narrating stories, which is essential to the Cabinet of Curiosities, to the owner and their power. The um, Cabinet of Curiosities also began to incorporate art. Think about collecting animals and plants that don't preserve particularly well. Well, that's when natural history illustration became very useful to fill in the gap in your collection. You might not be able to have uh, a preserved cyclamen that looks good, but you can have an illustrator make a picture of the cyclamen and that becomes part of your collection. So 
Art and nature come together in the cabinet of curiosities as we see here. Beautiful landscapes, studies of geology, and shells. But there is something fascinating about this confusion between nature and art. It establishes a dialogue between art and science that will lay the foundations of what we still witness today, this interaction between art and science that creates the most exciting and powerful culture of our time. As art entered the pictures, cabinets of curiosities began to acquire different meanings, as it is the case in this beautiful cabinet by Domenico Rems, which he painted. You can see here that there are three shelves in the cabinet. Each shelf is dedicated to a subject, that's of course loosely, but you can see how the curation became more and more engaged. The lower tier contains images of landscape, some rocks and beetles. This level of the cabinet alludes to the earth and the origin of humankind. The middle shelf, however, is about erudition, education and developing yourself into a human of a certain caliber. That's where you find geographical instruments as well as different objects that captures the essence of humanity and a still life painting right there visible through the doors which symbolizes the passing of time and the importance of religion. The top shelf is dedicated to mirrors and glass objects. It's clearly about meditation, self-reflection, and of course spirituality with the contemplation of death. You can clearly see that skull on the right hand side crowned by a red coral, an allusion to the spiritual. And on the side panels we see images of discovery. You can see ships at sea, important aspects of the development of knowledge of the planet and discovery for the individual. So the history of cabinets of curiosities becomes more and more complex as meaning is bestowed upon them. The objects become icons in their own right. The meaning attributed by the owner of the cabinet becomes art in itself, an art of narration. But one of the most important aspects of the cabinet of curiosities is that it allows us to re-envision the world through personal mythologies. The Cabinet of Curiosities is a place in which you take charge of the world and organize it so that it makes sense to you. It's a self-portrait in many ways, and it's one way in which we can bypass the authority of science in order to create a world that is more enchanted and magical. So this might already tell you why, over the past 10 years, we have witnessed a rise in popularity of Cabinets of Curiosities. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Artifact. If so, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for updates on new videos. Until then, keep being creative.